okay this is the moment I've been waiting for which is when I can start preparing the bodywork in earnest for paint uh, so as uh, a little experiment just to get an idea of what the finish is going to be like I've done some preparation work to the uh, bumper area this is the this is the impact sort of crumple zone area which sits behind your front bumper and what I've done is I've ground off all the old uh, paint that was on there, those thick layers of black paint um, sanded it down slightly and painted it I mean this area is going to be behind the uh, mud guard anyway but uh, it's come up rather nicely I think so that is going to be the colour of the van which I think you'll agree is slightly better than the colour it is at the moment nice and bright and this is the paint I'll be using it's a uh, Rust-Oleum Combi Colour uh, the code is 9016 which is Traffic White it's uh, a sort of white, white spirit based paint and uh, the brush is clean and the roll is clean in white spirit and if you're not familiar with this um, it's quite popular amongst van owners and a lot of other car owners you put it on with a roller and you get a very good finish you, you're supposed to do about three coats but what I'll be doing is one coat and then getting the van MOT'd uh, and then you have to wait about a week between coats so it's going to take about three weeks in total to do the three coats um, so you put it on with a roller and then after a week you lightly flat it with a very fine sandpaper you know, or wet and dry paper and then you put the next coat on and you do get a very nice finish almost uh, spray like so that is the paint Rust-Oleum Combi Colour two and a half litre tin costs around about £32 delivered and one tin should do all three coats which I think you'll agree for once you've paid for the uh, rollers and and you know, the roller refills and so on and a couple of trays it all works out at around about 50 quid for a complete paint job now well, if you recall from earlier videos the van was absolutely covered in uh, stickers and reflectors and novelty hands and things like that um, so the first thing for me to do is to remove any remaining stickers and you know graphics and silicon and so on so here's a patch of silicon here so the thing I'm using is uh, this sort of blade very sharp razor blade in the front there this was a couple of quid from a local shop uh, and another about a pound for some refills and just very carefully going to go along and remove the silicon it's the only way really to get a shot of it not too bothered about scratches and so on because I'm going to be painting it and get most of it off and then the sander We'll get rid of the rest of it. There's uh, this sticker here, which is under the old primer that I sprayed on. And we just go along here, like so, and get the old thing off there. Quite a pleasant job. Labour intensive, but got to be done can't be painting over stickers so. there we go that's right off there and then there's like remains of all glue I could have done with this scraper when I was cleaning the windscreen up 
because it does quite well, this. It looks quite drastic, but it uh, does the job. So we'll have a look around here. I spent a lot of time before removing stuff, but it's still uh, it's amazing you think you've got it, and then you find more stuff. But it comes off quite well with this little scraper. You have to watch the angle of it, otherwise it'll uh, dig in and stick a gouge in your paint. Yes, it, uh, it works away there quite nicely. Right, so in the uh, two years I've had the van, on and off I've been removing transfers and stickers and novelty hands and reflectors and so on. And I've one final push, I have removed every single sticker and transfer from the van, with the exception of the ones on the hard top because they're original. So that is it, but I, I, I reckon easily there must have been over a hundred stickers, reflectors and so on on the van. That's actually the outline of some undercoat, so that's gone. So I believe I'm finally there, I'm ready to start sanding. So here goes. Okay, I've begun the sanding with my DeWalt sander there. It's a DeWalt. Uh, where are we? It's there. I'll just focus the thing. It's a D26453. Cost about, I think it was about £75. Um, you can get cheaper ones, but. I've heard they don't last very well, but this one's certainly got the power in it, and so far very reliable. And this is what I've been doing. I think it's come up very nicely. You can see the difference in colour between the top half there, which I haven't done, and this white here. So it's cleaned off all the crappy paint. Right, so I've begun sanding in earnest on the front here. That really is a good sander. If you're doing this, you must get yourself a random orbital sander and about 80 uh, grip paper. And you just go over lightly and it just whips through everything. Smoothing everything down quite nicely. I might go to a slightly less grit paper when I get to the main panels because I don't need to go as berserk. So I now need to do that bit across there. So that's the front of the van sanded. It's come up very nice and smooth. So the way I'm going to work this is the first coat of paint, um, you have to bear in mind that with Rust-Oleum it's a self-priming paint so you don't need a primer and it also has a rust inhibitor so any surface rust um, will be neutralised. You can see the difference there on uh, this bit here compared to the door where I've done it. So the way I'm going to work this is I'm going to put on uh, the first coat of paint um, all nice and neatly with a good, you know, ensuring a good finish but that's going to be like a basic sort of primer coat. Um, so I work on a section at a time, I've just done this door as well So 
working on sort of sections at a time, so that'll be the door and the door on the other side, which I've got to do yet, and uh, the front, and then give that uh, a day to dry, and then work on the next section of the van. And then when all those first coats are on, I'll leave that to dry um, for about a week. And I'll give it a, a wash to get all, this, all the dust and dirt off. And uh, while the paint's drying for the week, do the various little jobs needed for the MOT and then get it MOT'd. And then when I've had my uh, much longed for little holiday, um, I'll then do the next coat of paint. Right, so this is the uh, paint mix. What this is, is I'm doing the front of the van and the driver and passenger doors. So I've mixed up 500 millilitres of rust-oleum with 15%, which is 75 millilitres of white spirit which gives you this consistency which is the uh, Club 8090 forum and the PDF they do on painting the van with rust -Oleum. they describe it as disappointingly thin runny custard which is about right there if you're if it's a lot warmer the weather then you'd add about 20% thinners but as it's uh, not cold and it's not warm I've gone for an in-between which on the panel I tried before which I haven't shown you that yet um, it worked just right but when you stir it you have to, you're not you're not beating eggs you're not making a cake mix you need to stir very gently so you don't fill it up with loads of air bubbles and it's a case of stirring and folding. Uh, this mix is almost there. It, it takes probably about 10 minutes of constant stirring, but you need the mix completely mixed, if that makes sense. Because you don't, you want the uh, white spirits and the paint mixed completely together. So you need to. Like drag the spoon round the bottom, make sure it's all mixed in there lovely. And you end up with 575 mils of lovely paint. I would I would um, when I come to do the bigger panels I'll be mixing a litre at a time. Um, but just mix it, pour what you need into your tray and then put something on the top of the jug to stop any bits getting in it and it will keep the paint from going off but this uh, mix is pretty much there and there is the front of the van painted like so finish has come out very nice indeed Unless this is just one coat, mind. A couple of tiny little runs right along there, but they'll soon flatten down. You can actually see the reflection in there. That's just with one coat. Looking very nice. A down sight better than it was before. And that's with a roller. And I've also painted the uh, side door there. I haven't done the wheel arch yet. The door's painted. Probably the light's not too good really to uh, see what it's like. And the door on this side's painted as well. Can't really make it out, you know.
Perhaps when the light's better. I've sanded the uh, door. That side's painted there. There's a little uh, point there which I'll tell you about in a minute. And it's all sanded all around here. And the wheel arch, so I'll be painting that wheel arch next. And up here as well. So that is all ready for paint. Now this area here, um, when I did uh, the other side I replaced the whole panel. That whole panel there. But with this side I thought I was being a real clever lad. And I thought I would make it easier by not having to cut out the, any wheel arch inside by just cutting along and replacing the bottom half. But as you can see, it didn't come out too well. So, I mean, obviously in hindsight, I should have replaced the whole panel, but uh, that's the way it is. I tried getting a big hammer and bashing in the welds and then so I could put a f some filler across, but uh, unfortunately, because the uh, wheel, inner wheel arch is there, it won't go in. Um, so what I'll be doing is I'm going to buy some like three striped like, vinyl to go along there like so um, and they're pre-made and you've got like three stripes and then a Volkswagen roundel and then three stripes uh, and then I'll angle the end of it down sort of like that to the bottom of the door and I'll do the same the other side and that will disguise that but yeah, shame about that but hey, you live and learn, don't you? Right, well it's been probably about two weeks since I was able to do any body work to the van um, but uh, in that time I've been able to put the first coat of paint on this side bad. I mean the uh, sliding door there, the, the bottom part uh, by there, that's got to be changed at a later date. I've got the panel for that. That there, I'll just have to live with that. And also that. And that's how it flows on into that. So, but I, I didn't do any of that. That was already there. So, whoopee, a feature. Come. I say that's going to be covered up with a, a black stripe of some description. But yep, this that is this side done here. So I'm now starting the, uh, the sanding on the other side. The doors already painted. That was painted before. So I've now made a start down here. Coming along quite nicely. Like I said, it's not gonna. This isn't gonna be a perfect example of a T25. It's gonna be a solid, tidy-looking van. So little ripples and blemishes and things like that. I'm not really bothered about. Because um, I've got a chrome bumper on the front. I've gone and splashed out and bought a chrome bumper for the back brand new from the German camper company uh, £98 a little bit of extravagance there the, um, the end caps I already had uh, which I have bought quite a while ago so let's just finish it off nicely I've got a new grill it's from uh, Volkswagen Heritage it's uh, a copy and the plastic, the thickness of the plastic and the quality isn't up to Volkswagen standards. Um, the, the plastic work where it's been taken out of the mould, there's all the, like the little excess bits which I've got to trim off with a knife. And also hidden behind there somewhere is a lower grill as well. Because both the front grills had had it really. Um, very manky and um, they'd been painted at some point, didn't look very good. So two new grills there. 
and uh, once this side's painted and then a little bit at the back on the bottom so remember I'm not doing the tailgate just yet I won't be painting that just yet because I need to do that repair work there and then fit the new window rubber but once that bottom section's painted I'll then be able to put it back together get all the lights back on and so on um, and uh, put it through the MOT um, in the two weeks when the weather was once so good I fitted two new front springs because I bought a set of four when I did the ones on the back so I fitted those two there the shock absorbers were rusted and one was leaking so I changed the shock absorbers um, also the rubbers for the roll bar were all perished they'd, they'd completely shriveled up so I fitted new rubbers on the uh, roll bar mountings and the drop links um, and I've also fit the, fitted a new steering rack as well so I haven't been resting on my laurels so when I get it MOT'd I'm going to get the tracking set uh, and the uh, rear as well the garage does four wheel laser alignment because the rear geometry is probably all over the place because obviously I had to strip it all apart but um, it'll very quickly get there I've also fitted a little bit of bling some uh, chromed window winder handles and fitted these snazzy chrome door pulls as well and one on the other side so back to the sanding Right, so I'm still busily sanding away. I've ground down the welds around the fuel filler repair and given it a nice spread of filler there. It's uh, gone off now, so I'll be sanding that in a moment. <coughs> I've taken the vents off and sanded around those. Uh, this here needs a bit of rust treatment on it just making my way around these windows I'm done along here so I've got this section along here to do afterwards a bit around the vent and along there and then I'll be doing the lower back end and then it'll be ready for painting in between doing bodywork, I managed to fix the, uh, the. I had a problem; the cooling fans weren't working, and uh, it turned out uh, to be a dodgy earth. Uh, there's a there's two sort of castles with prongs on which all the earths attached to, and one of those, well, a couple of them are quite badly corroded, so I took them off and put new spade connectors on and uh, now it works fine I shorted, uh, took the plug off shorted a wire across the, tip, the uh, three connectors uh, and this, the fan works at the two speeds um, I think it's been a problem for some time because the um, temperature gauge no matter what the weather's like or whether you're stuck in traffic or whatever it never really gets above like not a quarter but more of an eighth um, between like cold and a quarter which suggests to me that there's no thermostat in it probably taken out because the fans didn't work and it was overheating which is probably why it had a new engine fitted uh, so I've got a new thermostat to put in there and just to be on the safe side I'm going to fit a new fan switch in the radiator as well um, so I, th I think because it hasn't been getting up to temperature the engine um, that will be one of the reasons that going uphill with anything more than level throttle uh, black smoke comes out the back so with a bit of luck that will cure that problem right so all the sanding is done for what I'm going to be painting now not the tailgate and at the back there most of this area is hidden behind the mud garden. It has this kind of speckled, like sprayed, I suppose it's like a stone chip that's been painted over white. Um, I think it's 
that's from the factory, I think. So that's just been sort of keyed, basically, because it's quite sound. And the side's looking nicely patterned there. Ground down and filled the uh, filler repair. Nicely and sanded it now. That's come out very nicely on that. What it would look like with paint on, I don't know, but I mean, I don't see any reason why it shouldn't look okay. Yeah. So it's time to put the paint on. Well, I realised I didn't have a paint tray because I'd thrown the old one because it was all messed up. Um, but I've got one now, um, so I painted uh, this back part of the van, and as you can see, you just see a bit of reflection right by there. That's two thin coats, just see that reflection moving about just by here come out very nicely indeed and I've gone along the bottom here with a brush just right along this section here you can hear the uh, hear me Arab doing his nut over there his mate's gone out on a ride Oh, he always goes berserk. There we are. It's a little repair I had to do to the um, door catch area. And also along here, this will all be covered up by the carpet, this bit, so that's why I haven't bothered grinding it or anything. Same there. So that's all nicely repaired. Two finger marks by me when I put the rubber back on. Silly boy. Still, it'll probably have another coat anyway. But yeah, that's come out very nicely, that. Certainly shows the difference between the, the old paintwork on the tailgate there. Eh? And the new, and it all flows nicely into here. So it's getting there. So tomorrow, I will be doing the last side. And I think at the rate it's going, before I'm hoping to get it MOT, but the end of this month, the end of uh, end of May, which gives me six days. So if I get this painted tomorrow, and then I can chuck everything back on it, but I am tempted to give it another coat beforehand. So we'll just have to wait and see. Just thought I'd offer up the rear bumper, get an idea of what it's going to look like. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Very shiny. Yet another milestone has been reached in the continuing saga of the T25. The very first coat of paint on the van is completed. No prizes for spotting the uh, weld-induced wrinkles there. But as I'm sure you're aware by now, this van has character. <laughs> That's what I call it anyway. 
for a first coat. Very happy with the way it's come out. And the fuel filler section that I worried about quite a lot has come out quite nicely. Can't see any joins there to speak of. That's a run up there, like so. This side needs to keep a week now. And then what I'll do, I think, before the MOT, if I can wait that long, is give it all a light flatting again and give the whole van another coat, which should be a lot quicker. I should have it done, hopefully, in a, in a long day. I've put the lights back in on the back, the uh, number plate hatch. The engine inspection hatch thing, and uh, both the uh, number plate lights. That one didn't work, but I've uh, now fixed that. Once again, corroded connectors. Good job I bought a job lot of connectors. I'm a happy bunny with it, which is the main thing. Put the headlights in and both the indicators all working nicely. Because I've already given where the indicators are, I've already given them another nice thick coat of paint. So that will be a simple case of a bit of masking. I'll have to mask up all the windows again and the door handles. I've also refitted the carpet along there, all nicely glued down, refitted the, uh, the door seal and the bit of carpet in here. This was all sort of like chewed up and rusted, the carpet, if you've ever seen a carpet rust, well it rusted. <laughs> but okay with that. And there we go. I got these number plates off eBay. They're aluminium, pressed aluminium. Cost the same. See, you know, it's uh, pressed out the old-fashioned way. And they cost the same as two number plates would have cost from Halfords. So all in all, quite chuffed and glad it's getting there. I decided to wait a couple of days, flat it down and give it another coat of paint. So it's had two coats of paint. Also, as you can see, the lights going a bit here. I fitted the new, both new grills, and the headlights are back on, and the indicators, the front bumpers on, wipers, wing mirrors, vents, the new uh, fuel filler cap. Mud guard on the back, yeah, yeah sorry, must be motorbike bit coming out there. Uh, bumper on the back. So I think she's come together nicely there. All I've got to do is fit the diesel expansion tank on this side. 
which is just basically drilling one hole and connecting up a couple of pipes. And then she's ready for the MOT. Oh, and a number plate. Got the uh, pillar mounted aerial fitted on there. Nice and solid. Yep. So I haven't done any polishing to the paintwork, obviously. Because I've got to wait a couple of weeks for that. She's getting a nice reflection in her. I'm very, very happy with the way the paintwork's come out. The light's fading a bit here, so you can't really uh, make it out, but... Very pleased. Very pleased indeed. She's pretty much there. Oh, and the final major job. Scrub the... Uh, floor mat. Like I say, tailgate will be the last job sometime at the end of the season I think, because I'm going to enjoy her. Plus I'll have to sand down these horrible things on the hardtop and later in the year I'll be painting the hardtop as well. I might just tea cut this paint for now because it's the same colour as the paint on the hatch and that came up quite well so I'll tea cut it and it won't stick out so much so next time I see you it'll be time for the MOT